All right, there's a lot that we need to address when it comes to Casper. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about everything from the price performance to the project updates to the FUD, things like that. So with that being said, welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Nick. For those that are new to the channel, hopefully by the end of this video, you do become a subscriber. Now, with all of that in mind, one thing that I wanna say right now before we even jump into this video is that anything that I talk about on this channel is not to persuade you to buy a specific token. I don't care if you buy, if you hold it, if you sell it, I don't care. No one is forcing you to hold Casper. If you wanna sell it, sell it. If you wanna buy it, buy it. That is not me telling you to do anything. I don't give financial advice on this channel. The number one thing that I do on this channel is update you guys on news happening behind these projects, and that's basically it. Now, one thing that I wanna say right now as well, and what I wanna address is the things that I actually don't like about Casper, which is number one, the unlimited supply. I do wish that Casper did have, you know, just a baseline amount of tokens out there, the 8% year-over-year inflation is not a big concern from my point of view, simply because it would take about roughly 10 years for it to get to ADA supply, so it's not a big deal to me. But I would like it to have you know, a set amount of max tokens, and that's basically it. Number two is that within the three-year time frame that I've talked about Casper, we haven't really seen the ecosystem expand rapidly, which is a big negative thing. Outside of that, number three is performance. Those are the three main things that I don't like about the project, but it's three things that around the project could very well be improved on greatly. Now, as we do address that, let's actually talk about a few things. Number one is the performance. In the last year, Casper is down about 68.81%. Now, if we're talking about other altcoins in this space as well, they are down significantly. Are they down as much? Not really. Have they performed the same way that Casper has? No. In fact, a lot of them this year had a great spike up. If we're talking about Casper, guys, going back to October of 2023, it's about even, you know, the January timeframe, the March timeframe where most altcoins did pump. Casper hit about roughly almost five and a half cents or so, around five to five and a half cents. So not much performance at all. Now, is this a you know thing that I've been watching for and following closely? 100%. The performance on Casper has been terrible, and I will openly admit that. Now, the thing that is really kind of starting to have this massive sell-off on Casper outside of you know the security breach is FUD. I put out a post regarding the FUD on X, and again, I don't like to be disrespectful in the space at all, but when I see something happening in the space, that I just find absolutely ridiculous and ultimately not true, I have to talk about it. So a prominent individual around the space, Mason vs. Lewis, has been putting out posts regarding Casper, more specifically the team dumping tokens. I haven't been able to find any on-chain proof, and this has been going on for a few days now, so I wanted to wait on this before I actually comment on it because I wanted to do research. I wanted to find information behind this and I really couldn't find anything outside of just a few transfers on chain that don't really look like dumping at all. So I said, wait, so now there's allegedly on chain proof. Just last week, there were definitive proof that the team was dumping Casper. And yes, just last week, there was proof that, oh, the Casper team is 100% dumping on people. Now it's allegedly on-chain proof. I said, I am sorry. I have a lot of respect for many prominent figures in this space, but a lot of what I am seeing regarding projects like Casper is just ridiculous FUD. The performance has been abysmal, and I will openly admit that, but these rumors circulating recently regarding the team dumping is just nonsense. I've yet to see any proof showing the team actually selling. Any post typing this up, like the one below, is simply FUD, in the disguise of an engagement farming post do better. Now, listen, is the Casper team selling tokens? Yes, they most likely are selling tokens. They obviously have to have some, some sort of revenue generating process. Uh, the same goes for Hedera, the same goes for you know XRP with Ripple, the same goes for pretty much any project in the space. Anyone that is looking at selling and saying, oh, that's it, the team's dumping, is ridiculous. Now again, I haven't been able to see any 
on-chain proof that the team is openly dumping, you know, tokens on, you know, the, the backs of retail at all. Now, is there some selling of Casper? Sure, there is. There's going to be. But the ultimate driver of this massive dip in the market is not the team. In fact, what this is, is the security breach combined with posts like this alleging that the team is dumping. It's ridiculous. When you spark a flame, you can watch it spread very, very fast. And that's what's been happening ever since the security breach. Now, how can we really take this entire event and flip it into a positive? Simply by saying, all right, well, there's blood in the streets. Should we be buying it? And I'm not going to be the one to tell you guys to buy. In fact, I haven't been buying altcoins in the recent times because I've been waiting for Bitcoin to confirm a bullish market. We have yet to do that. But... One thing that I have been doing is letting my Casper work for me. Simply. That's it. Any sort of amount of money that I invest into this market, I instantly write off as a loss. Because there's not a guarantee that you will make money on any investment. I simply stack the APY, which is sitting at 13.5%, while everyone has been dumping their tokens. Which, by the way, this is proof that a lot of people have been dumping. It's not the Casper team. Simply, it, like, everyone's looking at this and saying, like, Oh, look at the price is dumping because of the Casper team. No, the price is dumping because a lot of people are selling their Casper tokens as well. 59% of the total supply is now staked. I remember when this was nearing 80%. So a large portion of the total percentage staked has been unstaked and dumped on the market. And I'm sure that there has been a lot of sell pressure since the security breach as well. Now, one thing that I will say is improvements positive is there any positive around this time 100 percent. while everyone is caught up on the fact that oh the team is allegedly selling and they're still you know putting a spotlight on the security breach just recently casper announced that xp network is now live right casper network is now live on xp network nft bridge this integration is a game changer for seamless cross-chain nft transfers connecting casper with other networks and opening up endless possibilities in the nft space again this is great love to see bridges being created like this i'm sure that there's going to be a lot more bridges happening around casper as well beyond nfts because that's exactly what's been happening even with axler for example uh, which i love to see now outside of this DeFi as well DeFi is coming to Casper Network. This will open the floodgates to DeFi being normalized on Casper. And here we actually have from Friendly Market, which by the way, um, this has been a project that I have been following since around roughly 2022, I believe. Uh, we have been waiting for DeFi on Casper for a very long time. And these things do take time. And here we have from Friendly Market, which is the DEX NFT marketplace and even more on Casper Network. Introducing REI token details, we're thrilled to unveil the details of our REI token to our awesome community. Here's everything you need to know about its utility and distribution. And here is a full breakdown of it. So this is the distribution. I'm not going to really kind of go in depth on this because it doesn't really make sense to. I just want to give you guys a quick insight on what this is going to do. So first off, REI tokens let you earn rewards by supplying the liquidity on their decks, reduce fees on their NFT marketplace, unlock exclusive features and gain future voting rights on key proposals as the project evolves. And uh, again, there's going to be more details regarding this. Down here we have REI token is at the heart of our mission to bring DeFi to the Casper network. And that's the end goal for this. Uh, Friendly Market has been around, like I said, for a while. It's been a project that I fully support um, and have been supporting for a very uh, long time as well on Casper because of what they are building. I love to see DeFi finally coming to Casper. I love to see, you know, bridges finally being built around Casper as well. We still need the live use cases. Again, that's the number one argument from my side when it comes to Casper is just a lack of user uh, use cases. We need to have some retail driven use cases as well to create some volume, create some growth and even create some value on the actual network. This is something that Hedera has recently finally realized like, hey, guess what? The money really isn't enterprises and institutions right now because there's still no guardrails, aka regulations, so it's going to hold them back for a little bit of time. And during that time, we need to embrace retail. So that's what Casper should be doing right now. It's really kind of focusing on retail as well, um, but also Prove AI. So Prove AI 
did start um you know their nft uh transactions it's the nft transactions you could actually see that on casper live right over here these are the nfts these are minting right now these are with the grayscale ai through prove ai uh this did officially start we have yesterday witnessed a uh, major milestone for ai governance on casper we minted the first transactions for prove ai with grayscale ai marking the first enterprise ai data on chain and this is great now this is still in beta um but they have been doing an incredible amount of you know volume on the network i think it's well over like three hundred and twenty thousand or something like that it's pretty crazy but this is a much larger project than what we are seeing right now because it's still in beta but also over here from prove ai with a lot of the regulations rolling out around ai specifically california so california recently released an ai bill and elon musk actually put out a response to it. we have this is a tough call and will make some people upset but all things considered i think california should probably pass the sb 1047 ai safety bill for over 20 years i've been an advocate for ai regulation just as we regulate any product and technology that is a potential risk to the public now remember what i've always said about ai you need blockchain casper is there around this i've told you guys many times when I do talk about Casper, the number one thing that really kind of keeps me holding Casper is not only just the AI regulation side of things, but also Actus, which we will get here, get into here in a second. But I want you guys to understand, and this just got recently posted on the 28th from Casper Network themselves, how to govern AI, prove AI nears launch with a solution. So with the official launch scheduled for September, now I'm going to hold them to this because I know that you guys are probably also aware, if you guys have been watching my videos for a while, if you guys have been keeping up with Casper, delays have been happening around some launches so i'm going to keep them i'm going to keep an eye on this and i'm going to keep their ward on september so prove ai by casper labs is already being integrated into operations by partners like grayscale ai explore why the combination of blockchain and ai is so powerful um especially as concerns over ai regulations and reliability grow in our new blog article and yes the convergence of blockchain and ai is extremely powerful because ai at scale needs blockchain blockchain is the guardrails essentially around ai but also actus so i'm sure that you guys are all aware of the x frontier i think he actually recently uh came back from a big break actus this goes back to august of 2023 over a year ago the actus standard condenses 98 percent of all financial activity into 32 algorithmic smart financial contracts and it will soon be an ISO standard. Casper is just one public chain of building on this standard through its joint venture, Nucleus Finance. ADA and Ethereum are also building on this work. Based on my research, Casper seems to be the only one with a live use case happy to be proved wrong. And I actually do believe that they're still the only one with a live use case around this. I believe more chains will eventually leverage Actus in the future, which in my opinion is healthy for the DLT ecosystem overall and tropability. I 100% agree. Um, and this is also from Ralph Kublai. I'm sure that you guys are all aware of who Ralph Kublai is. He mentions below, verifying the movement of assets across chains is important, but it is critical to verify the asset class itself, life cycle management, cash flows, valuations, et cetera. Check it out. We at, at Casper, when we built something in finance, we built everything on the act, what we call the Actus standard. By the way, not just Casper is building on this standard, Cardano has also implemented parts of this standard, certain people in the Ethereum environment. So the standard is the result of the financial crisis in 2008, when some really intelligent people got together and said, we knew we didn't know anything, so we have to change this. And we need to bring transparency to the cash flows on a systemic level. Right. But the reason why we're building on an open source standard is we want to have asset interoperability, right? So it doesn't matter where the asset's going to live. If the asset lives on Cardano and the asset lives on Casper or another asset lives on Casper, we need to be able to compare these two assets, right? If it's a bond lives on Cardano or a bond lives in a, by the way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be on blockchain. If the bond lives, you know, in DTCC, and if the bond lives, you know, in a Morgan Stanley, you know, or in a, in a bank's, you know, lifecycle management system, ideally they're identical, right? <laughs> and hopefully they're also lifecycle managed identically. The reality is they're not, which is why we have these reconciliation problems, which is why we have these systemic crises from time to time, because people disagree on what certain values are on you know, individual firms' balance sheets, right? 
And Actus is a very, very big deal. We know that Casper has been continuing to push Actus even now, currently, even over here from August 8th. How is Actus the standard for representing financial contracts being integrated into applications on Casper? This is actually from a Casper employee himself. Um, this is the head of developer relationships at the uh, Casper Association discussing building Actus enabled applications with Casper at the 2024 conference with Actus Research. Check it out. And let me uh, just really kind of skip ahead a little bit. Here we have it. My name's Mel. I'm the head of developer relations for the Casper Association. So I'm here in Washington, D.C. today for the Actus Conference 2024. For those who don't know, Actus is a standard for representing financial contracts in a standardized format. And as head of developer relations, it's part of my job to make sure that I'm ahead of the curve and understand what's coming down the line in terms of how to enable developers who are working with the Casper network how they can develop Actus enabled applications and access the functionality which we're hoping to deliver for them. So there you guys have it. And you know, as we really look at Actus, I still continue to focus on what they are doing. Um, a lot of people actually don't understand these uh, these standards. They don't understand these types of companies. They don't realize what's really going on behind closed doors. All they really look at is the price. And like I said, if I just focused on the price for Casper, yeah, I'd probably avoid it if I didn't know that most projects that have this type of performance typically lead into major spikes back to the upside. I hate to be that guy that is constantly talking about, you know, ADA when it comes to Casper. But if we go back in time, specifically going all the way back to 2020, ADA had a very, very similar move where it was hitting all-time lows, nobody cared about you know, ADA, and all of a sudden, things changed. I'm not saying that Casper is guaranteed to do that. In fact, we don't know if Casper will do this. All I'm saying is, typically, in this space, when patterns play out like Casper's, you don't want to be caught off guard by saying, that's it, I'm thrown in the towel, I'm done, when there's a possibility that this thing could bounce back in a very strong way, in my opinion, I'm still holding my Casper. I don't care to sell at these levels. Any amount that I invest it into the space, like I've said, is already kind of written off as a loss. Not, you know, fully. I can't write it off as a loss. But I'm just saying, it's something that when I throw money into the space, it's gone. It's gone, in my opinion. It's numbers on a screen until realized in. I know my situation and everyone else's situation is completely different, but that's how I look at investing into the space. It's money that goes in, and if it does come out multiplied by two, three, four, five, ten 10x, that's great. If it doesn't, then that's it. But to me personally, with all the fundamentals around Casper, with everything that we know about Casper, yes, there's negatives to it, just like any other project out there. But to me, as we really kind of look at the space, it's still evolving into a utility, you know, bull run sort of uh, landscape. We're not there yet. We probably won't be until regulations are in place. Um, we have a lot of work to do. But in the short term, guys, most of the space has been heavily hit. Heavily hit. Old coins completely decimated. Casper's Bitcoin pair has been one of the weakest charts I've seen in a very long time. And during this time, I just typically look at how is the rest of the market doing? Casper has not performed well, and I will openly admit that. I'm hoping that it does perform well going into the later months of you know this year. And if we finally start to see Bitcoin breaking to new all-time highs yet again, and we start to see Bitcoin dominance dropping and old coins finally waking up, I do believe that Casper at that time should have a very strong bounce in this market. And I'm still dead set on Casper hitting at least 50 cents to at least a dollar plus. And during that time, I think everyone will probably look back at these times if that is the case and say that was an opportunity in disguise and and we probably should have treated it as one. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys are definitely have a like, subscribe to notifications on because more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.